Guys, welcome to back to another Three Comic Money. This week, we got an artist with us, Mike Mayhew. If you ha don't know who he is, uh, you must be not reading comics because he has been, <laughs> he is everywhere. You've you've seen his covers. Um, if you haven't been to his site, check out his, is it Mike Mayhew Studio, uh, I believe? Yeah, and Mayhew Studio Everything. That's my Instagram. That's my website. That's my um, Facebook. Yeah, so he's with us. He's actually going to join us for uh, three shows. So over the next three weeks, you'll get to see some of these shows. Uh He's going to participate. He's going to play the game with us. He's going to share so three books that he likes, and he actually chose these categories. So if you don't like the categories, you can Instagram yeah, him. him. I should have <laughs> brought three shirts if we're doing three different shows. Well, we, in the in the past, we do do that, but I might unbutton each, a button each show, so it looks oh, okay. like I've changed a little bit. <laughs> I, I do have an undershirt, so you don't have to worry. I usually turn my hat around. It says CBSI on the other side. I'll zip my sweatshirt. <laughs> but... So, guys, we are, we're getting ready to start here. Three Comic Money, uh, CBSI. Hopefully, you've been reading our stuff, seeing it. Uh, so, let's see what the category is from the first time through. Uh, same game as before, Mike. Uh, three cards, you pick a card. Guest always picks first. So, which card do you think you're, it is under? I'm going to say the middle. Okay. okay. Mike, you go this time. Uh, the left card. I guess I got the right. All right. So, let's see. Is it going? It's no. There it is. The middle. Oh. Card. <laughs> All right. So, that Mike, you get to go first. And the category is gorillas. So, this Oof. is pretty cool. So, let's see That's why you chose cool. gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let me get that. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gorillas, man. You know, so before Star Wars in 19, you know, Star Wars came out in 77 when I was seven. Before that, it was all about Planet of the Apes, King Kong. <laughs> Gorillas were everywhere. Magilla Gorilla was cool. And uh, <laughs> I didn't have teddy bears. I had teddy gorillas. I remember I had my little gorilla stuffed animals that I named Cornelius and Zira. And uh, I just love gorillas. I always have. And um, I've even got a, a gorilla creator own property that I've, I've been developing for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I just love gorillas. And I know there's a lot of really cool gorilla comic covers. I remember at one point... Um, there was some sort of maxim over at DC of uh, yeah, if you don't want to, if you don't know what to put on a cover, just put a green gorilla on the cover and they'll sell. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. I, they'll always They're, be around. Uh, back in the CBSI has been around for several years, and back years ago, uh, uh, Ignacio he started this checklist of just gorilla covers. There's yeah, like yeah. sixty or seventy gorilla covers. Like I was, I was going, how the hell am I going to find gorilla covers? Because I have like one book that has gorilla covers. And then right. uh, Ben, the owner of the site, says, go check out this list. And I was yeah. like, oh, I'm set. I got it covered. Never mind. I didn't think. So I was like, I don't collect Flash. I don't collect Gorilla God. That's the only one yeah, I can yeah. think of. So This is the this is the easy one for me. This, <laughs> I think, well, I think, I think, I some, I think I've got a couple of covers you're going to like, Mike. Yeah, well, we'll let, like, here's his first pick. Oh, now that's one of mine. Yeah, I remember that cover when I was probably about, like, I'm going to say, like, 10 or 11. That probably came out in eighty in nineteen eighty, I wanna say. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean just, I mean Nazis and gorillas. It's like Nazi right? gorillas. It's cool enough. How can you kick it up a notch? We we'll store some swastikas on them, you know. <laughs> I mean, you I don't know if you guys remember it, but DC had the really cool content and the weird war titles and the weird western like Jonah Hex and some mm -hmm. of the uh, I forget that ghost the haunted tank. And some oh, of the yeah. artists they had oh, working yeah. on there were really interesting. The GI combat? Yeah, yeah. I just, I always remember the house ads in the books would always like grab your attention. And uh, they were really cool titles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's some great, there's some great skeleton covers through that weird war run, too. Yeah, there are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, Mike, uh, the next Mike, Morello, you're oh, up next. You got that X23 cover. Uh, oh yeah, there you got a couple of those back there. But yeah, that yeah, well, these are my, these are my favorites of yours. Uh, I featured this one a couple of times now, and that one I was just happy to get my hands on. That's a that's a pricey book these days. That's uh, like a couple hundred bucks, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so thanks thanks for a couple of beautiful covers. This was hard to track down. I had to trade my my firstborn for that. So <laughs> good thing you had a second child in the wings, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so uh, speaking of Planet of the Apes, I, I was, you know, John's not not with us on the show this week, but I decided to go with a foreign. I went with the Spanish. Oh, that's 
Spanish yeah. Planet of the Apes number one from 1979. Uh, so they oh. started theirs a little later than the American. But this cover art doesn't exist anyplace else. Uh, I love how stark it is. I love the fact that there's no, there's nothing else going on in the background. Because if you guys know the magazines from Curtis, um, Mike, you probably know these since you're oh, a yeah. fan. But they, they've got a lot of other stuff going on in them. And they're beautiful covers. Um, yeah. but, I love the fact that this particular one doesn't have anything except the gorilla with his machine gun on the front. Um, just a beautiful piece of art. Um, the lighting is insane on that. It is, right? Yeah, so good. I agree. It's just just something about this cover. I found this in a bargain bin, if you could believe it. Um, I'm still mad and, I passed that one up. <laughs> yeah, you you were there an hour before I was, and I went I went in that, that bin, and I was so excited. I've been showing everybody that cover since I got it, but that's my first pick. Uh, I love that. Spanish... Spanish uh, Planet of the Apes, number one, 1979. Nice. Not bad to start. All right, Peter, what oh, you got for us? Oh, that's right. I'm up next, aren't I? All right. So, uh, oh, where's your little display thing? What, behind me? No, the oh. um, but on the Overstreet Street books. We're on the Overstreet Street books. Where do you put oh, my display thing? Ah, I, I forgot. I put it down somewhere. That's <laughs> all right. I'm going to hold the book up today. Okay. <laughs> I went with it again. I go with the stuff you can probably find in a dollar bin. A little bit of the cheap stuff. This is a Action Eight Ninety Three. Ooh, cover. It's coming right at you. Yeah, I just like it. You yeah, just, yeah. The motion of it. You just coming right at Lex. Yeah, David Finch. This wasn't going to be my pick. I actually wanted to use the book that I used for the the cover screen there. That uh, gorilla head, but I couldn't find it. So oh. this is what I, find. So I went with this one. That one might have been Art Adams, I remember. If I remember. Yeah, I think it is the Adams. Yep. Yeah. Well, I just couldn't find it in the mess I have around here. All right, so I'm going, as, as people that watch the show know, I'm a Spider-Man guy. I think that's my go-to is Spider-Man, typically. And so I'm going with the Gibbon. Uh, oh. Amazing Spider-Man 110. This is his first appearance. Uh, he act, He's one of those characters that rarely pops up. He actually just recently popped up in the new series uh, that Nick Spencer's writing, uh, where the hunted with Craven was involved and everything, but it's a, I love this character. I'm, I'm a, I go gorilla. His name's a Gibbon. He's, I, I'm not quite sure. I mean, that was the tough thing with choosing gorillas. Like I have some monkey cause Marvel apes. I don't know if you did any of those covers uh, back when yeah, the Marvel no, apes it, series came out. No, I but. haven't done those ones, but that is a cool cover. I never knew. I didn't know of the villain, the Gibbon. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. If you, the, the new, the new amazing Spider-Man, I guess it was issued like, 19, 20, 21, they had a Craven run. And there was a yeah. 0.1, 0.1, 0.1 for like each issue. And yeah. Gibbon was featured in one of those as well. Oh, cool. I did some variants for some of those issues. Or where, yeah, uh, you have the, the, the Craven outfit. The Craven, yeah, that one always throws me off because I look at him like, is that a picture or is it not? Because <laughs> this black cat dressed as Craven. Um, it right. kills me because I've, I've almost bought him like three times. That issue okay, and your, you had like four in that run. Oh, I think I don't know if they're for the and there was a Spider Woman one for yeah. issue twenty one. Yeah, I love the Spider Woman. I love the Tigra. The 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 Craven one made it was a little hard for me because I was like, okay, I can't. She almost looks like a real cosplay cover, but I love yeah, yeah. the Tigra and the <laughs> Spider Woman. How dare you be realistic, Mike? Come on. Yeah, I, I, that's. Just, I mean, that's my thing. You know, we do we do it. appreciate we do appreciate realism when it comes to this character, though. Uh, Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just want to know who, how where'd you find the model for that one? That's that's just gorgeous. <laughs> uh, well, you know, at that point, I've been drawing comics for a while, and uh, I knew if I were going to draw a female like that for a whole issue, that I would want a high quality model, and I I just went to Ford Models in Scottsdale and. And uh, the girl was fantastic. She worked with me for two years, and uh, yeah, she was incredible. Wow, I was actually did she kidding. do that? Did she do that whole run with you? Yeah, yeah. Every cover, every panel, the whole the whole thing, you know. So beautiful, beautiful stuff. Yeah, it's just I like having you know I like working with people like that because they have talent. They can bring something to the character, and then also uh, it just keeps it so consistent. And you can play with the lighting and not have right. the likeness be different. And there's so. There's a, to me, there's a lot of benefit for, for it, you know. Yeah, I can yeah. get that. I, yeah. I pulled the CBSI writers and like, what was the first book? Like, what's what's Mayhew? Because we had, we didn't tell anyone that we were we had you on. We're going to have you on the show. So yeah. I pulled all like twenty writers. The first book that popped out of anyone's mouth was that Vampirilla cover. Oh, <laughs> and really? then, then it was like, cool. it was like the entire run. And then we eventually wow. hit all your vampire ones, uh, like the X twenty three. And that, that was sort of like everyone immediately thought of those. And then then the guy's going and doing the article. He's dropping picture after picture after picture. 
But that yeah. book was the one that everyone immediately that's, thought of when they yeah, think of that's you. That's a popular one. I should do a sequel to that. Everyone's <laughs> like, can't, vampires can't look in the mirror. And I'm like, no, it's another dimension. Or I don't know. Yeah, what I think that's actually <laughs> the mirror was like a portal to another dimension. And, and that's kind of what it was intended for. I can't remember. That was uh, 20 years ago almost. <laughs> oh, is it that long ago? Oh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like 2002 at the latest. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's two. Yeah. yeah. Two. Wow. Crazy. All right. We're ready for book two? Yeah. All right. This is your book two. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's a favorite of mine. Now, that might seem like a strange choice. So, this has sentimental value to me. I, again, like I said, when I was younger, uh, so I remember I must have had this when I was like five or six at the oldest. And um, it was King Kong, which was one of my favorites, fighting the Justice League in Metropolis. So you couldn't ask for more. Yeah, it's just and awesome. I remember uh, I had a tape recorder and I would read, I was reading the comic, you know, trying to make almost like a radio play or something. <laughs> I was really proud of myself that I was able to read it on my own. You know, I was, I was like I said, I was five or so. And I, I just have very strong memories of that experience of, reading the comic almost like i don't know if you guys ever did like the power records yes know, adam's art you know like i don't know man that the audio and the the visual it just like sears in your brain so i'll, I'll never forget that book i love those tower. i love those tower records those are great i'm still trying to oh, collect yeah. some of those golden golden record ones they're hard to find Oh, the gold. The, oh man, those are those are a little bit tougher. But yeah, the tower ones. I mean, they were they were twelve inch. They, so there was a ton of content. There was oh yeah two different stories. Sometimes three or four. The Justice Leagues. There was always like a Wonder Woman one by herself, and then there was maybe the whole team, and then there was a couple other random stories. They're yeah. they're great. And the Batman uh, ones uh, have Frank covers by Neil Adams. The, the Frankenstein uh, Dracula Wolfman one that Neil Adams did. Oh, yes, that one is epic. Yeah, that is. That is epic. I remember that one, too. Yeah, yeah. All right, Morello, what you got? All right, so I went uh, BWS, little Barry Windsor Smith, Conan number 11. I this thought is, about This is Thack, the ape. Uh, <laughs> uh, just, uh, just, a random, just a random villain for Conan to kill in some really gruesome way. Um, uh, I'm a huge Conan guy. Um, I especially love the early... Barry Windsor Smith covers. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Basima, but um, but these there's something about the layouts on these that I love, and this is just a great action shot. Um, just this was the first thing that popped into my mind when when I saw the uh, the theme for this week. So oh, there it is. Cool. I love that. Nice. Hey, you found it. Yeah, I did find it, so I figured out. I'll put it up. There. <laughs> And since you also made the other suggestion about the Marvel Apes, I went with a Marvel Apes pick for my next oh. one. And what with Frank Cho's cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Frank knows how to draw gorillas like crazy. Yeah. Give me an ape. <laughs> yeah. So I figured, I don't know. Again, I don't have that many gorilla books, but I knew I had that. So I figured I got to pull that out as one of the three. I don't think I've ever seen that That's one. That's an awesome yeah. one. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've even seen that, though. That, I remember that Apes Run, but uh, that's an awesome one. Yeah, there's a couple good ones in there, but yeah, Joe killed it on that one. Yeah. All right, for my next pick, I'm going to go with another sort <clears throat> semi key. Uh, oh, yeah. Jungle Action number five, Black wow. Panther, the first man ape. There uh, you go. This is, this is a, I think it's the first Black Panther solo stories. Oh, no, it's Ted back. That was his first solo stories were in Astonishing Tales, maybe. But uh, this is great. Great cover, first appearance of Man Ape. Uh, this is one of those I cracked up. I went to this random flea market out in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky, and the guy had one of these in, in on the shelf for fifty. And then I went through his dollar bins. He had one for five dollars or cheap boxes, and there's one for five. And like, They're the same quality. You have one for fifty and one for five. I'm gonna buy the five dollar one. Um, <laughs> but I was I'm very stoked. I I, I mean especially because I got this after all the Black Panther. Uh, movies came oh, out. Wow. Oh, so it was already hot. Yeah, yeah, it was a hot book. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> yeah. That's a cool one. That's probably written by my mentor Don McGregor, who I worked with on Zorro. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. He was the big writer for Black Panther, I think, on those jungle action books. And I don't know if before, but that's where <laughs> the KKK stuff was, and yeah, uh, yep, all the stuff that's in the movie. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. 
right, is that some of the early is that some of the earliest stuff you, you you've done we were trying to track down what your first work was we probably yeah. should know what it is but we we couldn't we didn't know it off the top of our heads well i did some justice league stuff uh, really early on but then zorro for tops in 93 or, or like 94 was like the real big you know the issue okay. one i did like seven issues and then we did a lady rawhide series so yeah. Oh, so you, yeah. you did Rawhide as well? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you do the covers for those or the in interiors? No, we had, I mean, we had all star cover artists. We had like Julie Bell, Adam Linsner. Hughes, uh, Linsner. Michael Golden, uh, some other huge names I can't remember right now. Yeah, Linsner. Yeah. I think I did the cover for issue one. Okay. Nice. Because I've seen those in, in dollar boxes. I see them pop up, and I'm like, okay, that, I like that cover. I like yep. that cover. And, and Mike's and I always go, Mike, do you have this? And he's just like, yes, I have that one. Okay. Well, I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big, state, so. I'm a big Lindsner guy. So anyway, whenever someone, oh, he's awesome. whenever, whenever someone finds Lindsner, and he's what a nice guy. I, I assume you've oh, met him before. He's absolutely. he's maybe the nicest guy in comics. Such a good and guy. He's got a lovely wife, too. Yes, he does. Yep. They're great to they're great to talk to in person. They always take time out for fans, and he'll he'll do commissions for you. And he just loves to chat comics. He's a really good dude. Yeah, yeah. All right, round three. Round three. Round three. All right, last pick. Ooh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, usually, I'm glad you guys represented Art Adams because he is a. Uh, uh, god of gorilla art <laughs> brian boland man he can really draw gorillas well i don't know something about all the yes. line work and the the realism and you know just i mean the storytelling of these boland covers is so great i don't know uh if that's supposed to be congo bill or whatever that guy's name is con, con gorilla oh yeah uh, yeah something like that but uh you know you don't need to know anything about any of those characters to kind of get what's happening there I don't think Swamp Thing's too happy with Gorilla. <laughs> That's a great cover. And in I think is, is that the uh, is that the one that uh, Justice League Dark has a cameo in? Is it no, that? No, that was it. Looks exactly like that, minus the gorilla. Oh, okay. Forty nine. I was actually about to comment. It looks exactly like forty nine. The face <laughs> it, it does outside. There's no gorilla on the cover. There's no gorilla. It's just Swamp Thing face. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Boland's Boland's work in that era was just. I mean, was just one. Ex, you know, explosive hit after another. You could do oh, no yeah. wrong. Those Wonder Woman covers that Ronnie did in Wonder Woman is fantastic, oh, too. And, I mean, yeah. I could go on a little bit covers. here. Yes. Uh, these Visible's covers. I mean, yep. that guy. Man. Yeah. I, I've got a couple of his books that I'll pull out a couple times a year just for, you know, the inspiration. Yeah, just this detail is just incredible. Oh, Jeez. yeah, yeah. Just the penciling in the in the hair is unbelievable in there. God. Yeah. And, and the other reason I like the gorilla thing is, you know, uh, like Frank Cho, you can really determine the quality. It's kind of like drawing women. You can really determine the quality of the artist by the, the, the quality at which they draw gorillas and women. You know, there's something, there's some <laughs> subtleties that, that are hard to pick on, pick on, you know, and it, if you can recognize those in your draftsmanship, it it sort of shows a certain level of skill. I don't know. Yeah. But should I go to my wife and say, Mike Mayhew just compared gorillas and women together? Are they, are they similar? <laughs> I might be well, sleeping on the couch. Uh, isn't, isn't that or the name of those art books, uh, Gorillas and Babes? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm honest. <laughs> I think, doesn't Cho actually have a sketchbook called something like that? I think he might, that's actually. What, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I think he does. You know, that, that's the name of his sketchbook, so it's... <laughs> you know, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Okie dokie. Morella. All right. All right. So speaking of speaking of covers that Chris always tries to find for me and, and emails me or texts me if I have them are Dave Stevens covers. I went with the uh, the oh. King Kong from Monster oh, yeah. Comics right? 1991. Speaking of babes and gorillas all on the same cover. Um, just an unbelievably sexy cover, beautiful just beautiful stuff. I love Dave Stevens' work, um, and this was a this was That's a must. Love that this one. A, that is a beautiful one. That is a good so, one. So so classic. Just just great stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I just got a lot of Dave Stevens books just the other day, but I did not get that one. So now I got to add that to my list of uh, books. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking, uh -huh. I didn't do that. I was like, what? No, I don't have that one. Thanks a lot. You guys <laughs> always costing me money. 
That one I found on my own. Chris, you did not find that one. I know, I know. <laughs> My last one, I had to go with an Agents of Atlas book because, yeah, Gorilla Man is one of the few gorillas I also know. So I went with this uh, Greg Land one where Ooh. got this gorilla oh, that's rocking it, dual machine guns. Man. Yeah, gorillas and guns, too. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah, Absolutely. you get that fierce growl. I don't know. It just popped out to me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick this one. I had a whole stack of Agents of Atlas books, but that's the one I went with. I love I love that you chose That's Land beautiful. too, because I, I always feel like Land. Whenever I whenever I feature him so, uh, on a week and whatever, I always feel like he gets underappreciated. He's such a great artist. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no doubt. And, I think because he does so much. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think because he does so much work and he doesn't do a lot of incentives and stuff, he just doesn't get the same love that a lot of other artists get. But doesn't mean he's not as good or better. Oh, no doubt. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. I have to honor our guys who aren't, aren't usually here, and I'll go for Golden Age. Mm. Uh, Airboy. Oh, oh, wow. This is Ernest That's Schrader cool. or Schroeder. Uh, I, I looked into, I mean, th this is rough. I mean, if you can sort of see, it's all, it's sort of falling apart. Mylar makes it look a lot prettier than it is. But I got a, I got four of these books for like $30. Um, couldn't believe it. Uh, this is just a, such a gorgeous monkey leaping off a of, <laughs> boat onto attacking Airboy. Uh man, if you if you haven't gone through and looked at Airboys, the 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 Golden Age stuff, their covers are gorgeous. I didn't realize how many fabulous covers and outside of one or two are actually affordable. Um yep. I, I was very impressed. I got I mean shoot I got at least four books. They're not in great condition. But I, I mean with Golden Age is just as long as the cover's not falling off, falling apart. I mean it's just that's what you want to look at. If I want to read the book I'll go try to find it online or I'll buy a uh, graphic novel with it in it but yeah it's all about very, the smell it's all about the yeah. smell you open up that golden age book and get your nose in there man as long as it's not moldy it's <laughs> nothing like it <laughs> so, guys well we knocked out gorillas i mean i saw some that's great cool. covers um yeah, yeah I, cool. I really liked a lot of them uh we do want to thank mike for being on this show we're going to do two more in a row but here my question for you I want to talk about what you got coming out or just came out on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this book here, talk to us about it. Um, I, I, I was looking behind me because yeah. I thought I had the painting back there. Oh. I must have put it away. Anyhow, uh, oh. so I did, that, uh, I did that painting for Comic Art Live. Um, the owner of the Comic Art Fans, Bill Cox, said, you know, they wanted new artwork no one had ever seen before. I thought, eh, you know, what if I through uh, X-23 in a Wolvie costume, similar to my X-23 vampire cover. And I just sort of did this uh, on a whim, um, you know, mainly for that event. And uh, Frankie's comics saw uh, my process on Instagram and they uh, wanted to put it on a cover. And so here we are. And, um, you know, they're, they're kind enough to let me participate in the variant. So uh, tomorrow, uh, well, I think this is airing on Friday, but yeah. uh, on yeah. Wednesday, Day, uh, the first pre sale start at Frankie's, my store, Golden Apple, uh, Comic Kingdom of Canada, and Forbidden Planet UK for this, uh, you know, uh, exclusive uh, variant. And uh, yeah, we'll see it. So I'm already getting a lot of heat from uh, messaging, and people are chomping at the bit. So, uh, you know, I'll have uh, maybe, I, I think I'm going to have maybe about uh, 80 sets or something. So I, I, I anticipate they'll go pretty quickly. That's yeah. awesome. So is there a virgin yeah. and a trade dress of this? There is. I just saw the trade dress today. It's got, I, I'm looking at your picture and it's got that red X-Men symbol sort of behind her to the, uh, to the left. Okay. Uh, yeah. It looks oh, sweet. So, yeah. Yeah. So there'll be the trade dress and the virgin trade dress is $15. The virgin set is 50. And then there's some signed COA options on my site. There's graded options. You know, we offer all sorts of stuff like that. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Guys, we also do apologize if this is sold out by the time you actually watch this show. You have to. <laughs> but we do want to show if you haven't seen this, this is also available on, on your site as well, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that went for sale uh, about a week and a half ago, and that did incredibly well. Um, I'm really happy with that. I've been wanting to do the Baroness for the longest time and finally got the opportunity, right. and people just went uh, berserk over it. I, I, man, I hate to do my own horn, but it just. It's it's rare when it just you really you know 
you know without a doubt people like it and this is one i just i know without a doubt people enjoy uh so much more that i just uh, turned in a sketch for uh, another gi joe cover today oh, so nice. we'll see nice. uh, i'm sh- keep an eye on instagram or facebook uh i'm sure i'll be teasing you guys with that Ooh, yes. <laughs> nice I-, I love instagram guys if you haven't watched on Instagram, he puts a little the little images of like the you can pull up his X uh, the X twenty three Wolverine the cover and you can see his process on some of the little videos and they're great yeah. to watch. Like if yeah, you're I've a striving artist or if you just want to know like how I've you do the call. Video where I'm airbrushing and I'm pulling the frisket off. And, yeah, you know, on, on the on his Mystique book, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't have that one up here, but I do have that one somewhere. You no, know, I think the Mystique one you're talking about is is the one I. Just did for Jim Lee's charity auction. Oh, that's what that's for. But it looked and familiar. It was a lot like my miss was um, on the regular run. But yeah, I, I did that. It was a brand new. I think I was thinking of this uh, one. That that went off the auction. Yeah. Very hmm. cool, guys. Thank you for watching. So yeah, you thank- can still get that GI Joe two seventy three. I still have a few copies left. Very cool. Thanks for watching, guys. We're about to jump in into our next show. Uh, but thanks, Mike. Thank okay. you. We're awesome. Thank you. you. Guys, you've been awesome with you for this week. Uh, tune in next week for part two and see what else the other covers he chose for us to talk about and look at. So, All right. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's good talking to you guys. All right. I'm going to put this up. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, the, hopefully you enjoyed the interview with Mayhew. We do have to announce our winners from last week's Redheads article. Uh, you guys did a lot of great things. We're going to scroll through the site real fast, and we're going to show you how many awesome comments we had. We had, I think, 28 to 29 on each, and both on YouTube and on uh, CBSI. Uh, hopefully you are reading the articles if you're, I mean, if you're waiting for this. So, uh, But also thank you for hopping on YouTube. Uh, we had some great suggestions. One of the things we did notice you didn't put your comments in both places or you have a different username in both places. So it made it a little hard to cipher through them, but we had about six or seven really good from both in both places. And we finally decided on, uh, I think the name is Rembrandt, um, if I'm not mistaken. And we love the choices. Uh, I think he played to the audience. He knew there, that we had Mike Morello and uh, he's a big Frisson fan. So. <laughs> Frisson's there, the Phoenix Resurrection, Gene Frisson. And then we have the Inhumans yes. Menard. The fact that you pulled out a Menard cover makes me happy just because that's one of those covers that entire run are hard and impossible to find. And then Cheeto is an underrated person. So uh, Ray, Ray Rembrandt, Rembrandt, however you say it, uh, contact Ray us. Ray D we, on YouTube. Yeah, Ray D on YouTube. Uh, you'll see the information on this this next article. Uh, contact us and you will we'll get you hooked up with the star variant. So the Virgin Star from Ji Hong Lee. Oh yeah, let me show thanks you. Thanks a lot to thanks a lot to everybody who participated in that and and wrote comments. We really appreciate your interaction um and keep keep them coming. Yes. Definitely. Once again, this is the, this is the book, so Yeah. So and I have it in hand. It is actually beside me here on the computer. So there it is. This is the book you'll be giving. So as soon as I get your information, we will get it out to you. Ray Rembrandt, however you say your name. <laughs> And as always, uh, everything at CBSI is awesome. Uh, but it's it's also we can't do this without some of the people that help us out. Comic Barricade, if you haven't seen, use these things. These are beautiful little plastic things that help your box from the books falling over and bending and doing different things. They sort of just help stabilize your box. Uh, great thing is people from CBSI help make these things because we are collectors. We know what matters. Peter here is showing you one of these things. You just slide it in and it helps hold your books yeah, in place. Pop it right in the box. This thing is, this thing's sturdy. Yeah. So reach out, comic book, comicbarricade.com. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks.